Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Priyanka, lecturer in prosthetic dentistry. I'm going to take your lecture topic today. Uh, the topic is provisional restorations. So coming to the le learning outcome first, uh, that is requirement of a successful interim restoration. Um, describing the currently available materials for fabrication of interim restoration and discuss the material properties and its advantage, disadvantage, indications as applicable. So at the end of the lecture, you'll be able to, um, you'll, you'll be able to uh, answer these questions. So coming to the introduction, the word provisional. So that means uh, for the time being, pending a permanent arrangement. So the synonym of the word provisional is temporization, interim processes, and provisional processes. Why is a provisional restoration needed? It is needed for the period of time until there is uh, the permanent restoration done in a patient's mouth. So it is used to protect the prepared teeth or tooth and keep the patient comfortable. So if we do a successful treatment with provisional restoration, a dentist can also make the patient confident and it will help in influencing the factor of success in the final restoration. So uh, basically, during the time between the preparation of the tooth and the placement of the final crown or the final restoration, the tooth is protected by the provisional restoration. So uh, we cannot really uh, see how long the lab might take for the procedure of making the final restoration. So any delays or patient's availability or due to any reasons like correction of TMJ disorders or periodontal diseases, uh, provisional restoration may have to function for extended periods. So provisional should be fabricated on the basis of expected short-term use. Right? So it should not be fabricated on the basis of expected short-term use. So defining the provisional restoration according to GPD-8, it is a fixed or removal process designed to enhance aesthetics, stabilization and function for a limited period of time after which it is to be replaced by definitive processes. So it has three main requirements. Uh, dividing it into biological, mechanical, and aesthetic. So according to the biologic requirement, it should be able to protect the pulp. It should be able to maintain the periodontal health. It should have a occlusal compatibility, maintain tooth position, and protect against fractures. Mechanical requirements are it should resist the removal forces, also resist the functional loads, maintain the interabutment alignment. Aesthetic requirement is it should be easily contourable, it should have a proper texture and it should be it should have translucency and it should have some color stability. So the pulp protection mainly means it must seal and insulate the prepared to surface from oil environment to prevent sensitivity and further irritation to the pulp. So factors contributing to pulp death can be microbial exposures, chemical exposures, thermal exposures, um, and uh, any trauma in any form. So coming to the periodontal health, there should be a proper contour, there should be a marginal fit, and the, the, it should have a smooth surface to facilitate plaque removal. Uh, it's also important when crown margin is placed apical to free gingival margin. 
inflamed and hemorrhagic gingival tissue make procedures a little difficult. So it should be avoided. There should be occlusal compatibility and tooth position. It should be established or maintain proper contact with adjacent inadequate contact allows supra eruption or horizontal movements. Uh, so as you can see in the photo, okay, sorry. Uh, as you can see in the photo that there are rough margin, uh, rough margins here. So it jeopardizes the procedure and, uh, and it also creates problem for the tooth surface underneath, it will also contribute in plaque accumulation and as a result there will be unhealthy periodontal. Okay, so as you can see these photos, uh, so if a provisional restoration does not ensure provisional stability, tooth movement can occur and additional treatment will be necessary. So it should be stable and also proper occlusion and proximal contacts promote patient comfort and tooth position. So it should have a proper occlusion and contact with the adjacent teeth. So as you can see in uh, photos A and B, we are talking about over contouring in the anterior region and in the posterior region. So we'll be discussing in detail in the later slides. Prevention of enamel fracture. You can see the enamel fracture here, okay. So it should protect the crown preparation margins, also have a proper coverage so that it doesn't damage while chewing or mastication function. So it should, the greatest stresses during chewing is uh, always there. So breakage, most likely with partial coverage restoration and fixed partial dentures can occur, which should be avoided. How do we avoid it? By following all the principles of making a proper provisional restoration. So at the end, the provisional must protect the teeth. Okay, so yeah. So now we're talking about the over contouring here. Uh, as you can see in the anterior, if you do the over contouring, the degree of over contouring is limited due to the aesthetic. So we will not be able to really over contour anything. In the posterior region, aesthetics is a little restrictive. So, but over contouring should not be done to disturb the periodontium. So anywhere over contouring is wrong. Displacement. So to avoid pulp irritation and tooth movement, a displaced provisional must be re-cemented immediately. This prevented through proper tooth preparation with closely adapted internal surfaces. So removal or reuse. Often sometimes we need to re-cement the same thing and do the procedure and reuse it. It should be able to withstand any of the breakage or any of the problems while we are re-cementing and taking it out and reusing it. So depending on the fabrication, we have prefabricated versus custom fabricated. So custom made provisional restoration. It is a negative reprodu reproduction of either the patient's teeth before preparation or a modified diagnostic cast. It can be obtained directly with an impression material. Direct. So there are three techniques how to make a custom made provisional direct. So these are constructed with the matrix line with provisional material that is placed directly on the prepared teeth. Indirect, these are constructed by placing the filled matrix over a model of prepared tooth. Thus the provisional is constructed out of the patient's. We are using indirect direct uh, here in our college. Uh, so, okay, so coming to the material requirements. Uh, okay, so 
it should be convenient to handle it should be wire compatible it should have dimensional stability it should be easy to contour and polish then there should be adequate adequate strength and abrasion resistance it should have good aesthetics and patient acceptance ease of adding to or repairing and chemical compatibility with provisional loading conditions okay so coming to the advantage and disadvantages um advantages are it should be minimum in each it uh, should have minimum interference. It should be helpful in evaluating the adequacy of tooth reduction. And there is a wide variety of materials which can be used. This advantage is it has additional lab procedure involved and it is time consuming. Coming to the preformed provisional restoration, these are commercially available in many sizes. If they don't really satisfy the requirements of provisional, but uh, it can be used sometimes and thus be lined with autopolymerizing resins. So various alterations like internal relief, axial recontouring, and occlusal adjustments are required. So basically these should not be used. Material used to make provisionals are polycarbonate, cellulose acetate, aluminum tin silver, and nickel as you can see, this is the polycarbonate crown, the tin silver, and cellulose acetate. Advantages are it is less time consuming. Disadvantages rarely satisfy, satisfies the patient and generally limited to single tooth preparations. Coming to the direct technique, the external surface form is provided by custom or prefabricated techniques which were discussed. Patients prepare teeth and gingival tissues directly provide the tissue surface form. Higher potential tissue trauma from the polymerizing resin and poorer margin present a disadvantage. Okay, so as you can see in this photograph, it can be seen in the photo, yeah. Okay, so we have uh, made a temporary and uh, we are checking the margins and now we are trimming the margins, uh, placing the looting cement and now placing the Once the final um, restoration, that is the crown comes from the lab, we can take it out and uh, Now mark the points in the actual final restoration and place the looting cement. Place it in the patient's mouth. Take out the axis by the margins and place it back in the patient's mouth. And check for the occlusion and the interproximal spaces and the clearance. Coming to the indirect technique, Impression of the prepared teeth and gingival tissue is made and poured in quick setting gypsum. Provisionals are fabricated outside the mouth. Advantages here are no tissue damage, allergies, or sensitization to monomer as it is not coming in contact with any patient. Procedure avoids subjecting a prepared tooth to heat created from polymerization. Uh, they may have a better marginal fit as uh, stone restricts resin shrinkage during polymerization and separating the resin from tooth causes distortion. So this is the indirect technique. So you can see the missing teeth. And uh, we are placing one uh, acrylic teeth in place of missing teeth. And we are making, we, are t uh, we have made a putty index and we have placed the putty index. So now you can see here, um, now we have placed the material, the provisional restoration material, and uh, then you press it back on the tooth surface, you can get that the 
um, the provisional restoration is ready. Okay, coming to the direct indirect technique. So advantages here is reduced share site time, less heat generated in the patient's mouth, contact between tissue and monomer is reduced. Okay, so here we are almost doing the same thing, but this is done in the patient's mouth. Half of it is done in the lab and half of done is it's done in the patient's mouth. So you have a cast with the missing teeth. You have taken an impression of the patient. You put a temporary teeth. You make a putty index. You can see the occlusal surface of the putty index. And now you load the temporary material. You place it. And uh, now you can see that um, the uh, restoration, uh, the, the provisional restoration is ready. You trim it off and then we can place it in the patient's mouth. Uh, in this one, uh, in this uh, technique, you can also, after you get the putty index of the form teeth, what you can do is you can load the uh, temporary material and you can uh, directly put it in the patient's mouth. And then we can get a provisional restoration and take it out and trim it off and then uh, put a loading cement and uh, you can place it back in the patient's mouth. So coming to the removal, removal, re-cementation and repair, it can be removed in certain cases. And um, so uh, basically, whenever we should, we are removing or re-cementing or repairing, it should not fracture of tooth or foundation must be avoided. So the tooth should not fracture off. So you can use a forcept and uh, that is known as the back hose or hemostatic forcept to remove it. Also, uh, there is slight buckling or rocking movement which is required to break the cement seal. So it's just the movement of the forcep which can be used or either you can just take it out with a probe. So coming to the limitations, it lack of inherent strength, poor marginal adaptation, color stability, and wear properties. It has a det detectable odor. Also, it has inadequate bonding characteristics, poor tissue response, and difficult and incomplete cement removal. Okay, so coming to the summary, uh, provisional restorations, basically are for short-term use and then it is actually discarded. They can provide uh, pleasing aesthetics, adequate support and good protection for teeth while maintaining periodontal health. They may be fabricated in dental office from any of the several commercially available materials and number of practical methods are available. The, su the success of fixed prosthodontics often depends on the care which with which the provisional is designed and fabricated so thank you so much for the patient listening